Uh, back for another update on the um, CNC lathe rebuild, or the Mazak mission, as I like to call it. Uh, just going to cover a couple of things that um, I've shown you in the last two videos. I think it's number 15 and 16, I think it is, if you've watched those two. And just include some of those things in this video. Most of the parts have been assembled now, but you've sort of seen some of those things that I've talked about. The actual weight has been disassembled and so on. And then we'll just go over to the machine and I'll just show you the lube lines just to finish, finish off this video. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, if you're following along, I had this um, whole housing uh, hot tank just to clean it all up. And then I've gone over and stoned all the surfaces, take all the nicks and burrs out of it and make it a bit more appealing to look at. Um, the next thing I'll probably just take you down and show you is probably the last thing I showed you uh, in the previous video was this um, hydraulic piston or cylinder. Uh, I referred to it as a drum, trying to think of the right word to describe it in the, in the, in the previous video. Um, that unit drives the actual tool turret out so it can index into position. I'll just quickly show you how that system works. So you can imagine there's a tool turret on here that actually the tool turret actually with the actual holding the actual tools themselves I'm referring to, and this bolts onto the back of the actual turret. In my case, it's eight. It's an eight tool turret, and what the system does first is when it does a tool change, it pressurizes the unit, and then drives this out to a certain distance, and then and then the actual actuator will drive it to the actual next position. In whichever way or, or, or continuously around depending on where you're chain, spinning it um, manually or through the CNC controller so let's just sort of just show you that just how that system works and as you can see it's it's pretty well locked into position there so you, when you're cutting the actual just and there's no chance of this moving and that's pretty much the system that most CNC lathes use uh, not just Mazak they might have a different uh, machining or something like that but the actual function of the unit works pretty much the same uh, just bring you over to the actuator now I'll cover a couple of things on this when I spin the actual housing around and show you how this works. Um, I did show you the blank in the previous video, and I didn't show you cutting the gear, which I didn't want to bore you for a gear cutting. There's enough videos on YouTube about gear cutting. Um, so I've got this back from heat treatment now, looking pretty nice um, as compared to the previous gear, you know, which we'll look at in the in the last video um, with that couple of teeth missing out of there, definitely a, a huge improvement. So this is all ready to go back together. I've explained some of how this system works about, as I say, without dragging on too much, how the, how the unit mounts up and, and how it functions shortly. So what I'll do is I'll just get the unit spun around. We can talk a little bit more about what, how this system works and what I've, other modifications I've done. We seem to have enough light in here so you guys can see what's going on inside. I have shown you basically inside before when it's laying on its side, but it's sort of sitting us in its position that would go on in the machine now. So I'm just going to walk through a couple of things, explain a couple of things, as I say, without dragging on too much, just more so with things that I've done, uh, and just explain how the, how the system works. Um, as you might have seen in that previous video, as I say, if you've been following along, you had this uh, gear sitting on the end of the shaft there that was sitting on the on the bench, which on the other side was that that hydraulic uh, cylinder, uh, which actually drives the turret out. So that's already bolted on there. Now there's that other gear there uh, that's actually for a sensor for the actual CNC controller to know which tool position it's in. So you have another sensor that actually mounts on here as well. You can see a couple of holes that have, that have ported through here. So these holes actually bore in and then port across to that actual hydraulic cylinder. So these actually, as I say, that's the, the unit that pressurizes first before the actual unit can drive, obviously, in a rotational position. So that, they, that pressurizes through here first. So just taking you over to the actuator again. So coming through, the, the pressure comes through these ports here. It doesn't really concern which one's which, but they, it drives uh, pressure, pressure out and pressure back in uh, for your return as well. So as I say, this, this um, forces the pressure through, which actually drives the actual um, turret out so it can actually index. I'll just grab another part and just show you another part that's included in here as well. It might make a bit more sense of other things I want to talk about. So I put this other plate in that mounts in inside the unit as well, which you would have seen in the last video. Uh, I have this plate here that the actual the actuator bolts onto, so you can see those two holes there again, which ports through to the opposite side. And just wanted, as I, as I say, I want to show you a few things on this more so, uh, more so with, with the adjustment of it and just how the actual weight of bolts on so, uh, so forth. So you can see the gears through here. So that gear on the actuator. So just taking you back over to the actuator again. Uh, you can see this boss on here with the gear in the centre. 
So just bringing you back over, you can see this port through here, or this machined hole, so that bus mounts through here, and the gear engages onto this gear here, and that gives you your drive for your turret. Obviously that's turned in now, because there's nothing to lock that at the moment. And I was talking about with that gear cutting, how you had some adjustment with the looseness of the hole. So the holes, you got some side play. You got a little bit of adjustment, not, not a huge amount, but some to in, get, the, get the correct engagement uh, from tooth to tooth. So you haven't got any backlash. So what Mazak do is they put this uh, offset cam here. You can sort of see that center bolt there, that socket head bolt in the center here. You can see there's more material on, one, on the right than there, is, than there is on the left. So this is an, uh, an adjustment cam, so you leave this bolt, uh, well, you just a little backed off, so you tighten it up and back it off just a, probably a quarter of a turn, so you can actually rotate this cam, and what this does is it drives the actual plate across, okay, I don't know if that's showing up okay, so that's pushing that plate towards that gear, so you can imagine there's a gear in here, and that's increasing the engagement into here, so you can adjust that finely rather than just trying to knock it over with a hammer or something and trying to get it right. So, and then you just tighten that up, obviously, and then you go around and tighten up all your other mounting bolts and so forth. Um, as I say, the actuator bolts directly onto here, and as I say, you have your gear poking through here. A couple other things why I've got you here, um, just a few other things. The lube holes i've just decided just to seal those up uh, they're just uh, filled with sealant so even if somebody wanted to um, put it back in the original for whatever reason um, i've only just put sealant in there just to blank off the holes just to stop any debris and so forth going down into those holes there and just a probably a couple of other things probably possibly is more so mounting the actual linears themselves because i don't know if you remember or not when i was talking about the um, the high wind linear blocks they run an M10 which is on the end of this bolt here and that's the original Mazak uh, size bolt it's not the actual bolt but same size which is an M12 so I've, the way I've got around that is I've used these shoulder bolts which are what they call M12 so the shaft is M12 and you've got matching size heads so I can set that up there without falling over everywhere. So you've got the same, matching same size hole, even though the socket heads are different sizes, but the actual OD of the of the actual head is the same. So what what that main why I've made on that for mainly why I've done that is so I can got the same amount of material that it's grabbing hold of inside the bore because there's not a lot inside that can of bore to grab hold of. Obviously, if I put an M10 in there, just about drop through that hole. I think that's about a 13 mil hole. I think for memory. Uh, through the center there so the head actual head of the bolt would just pretty much drop through i could make up some spaces but this was just a, a more economical and practical way to do it i've already got the m10 thread on there and you've got the 12 mil head and the shank on there so so you sort of got the best of both worlds to be able to set up the um the high wind blocks have had too much trouble without actually modifying so I've only, the only thing i've had to do is just modify the actual linear blocks which is what i'd shown you already anyway that's probably about as much as I can actually show you on this part. I might just take you over to the machine if it's not dragging off it too much longer. So I've got you pointed back down on the linear blocks again. Uh, more so just to show you the, the uh, lube lines, how I was talking about in that previous video, how I was going to set that up. Just wanted to bring you back and show you that. So you can see that uh, manifold that I've made up with the, the O-ring seal there. So when that clamps up, it makes a good seal underneath the actual uh, housing itself where that lube line feeds into this block, as I've shown you previously. Uh, this elbows out and tees across to each side, so it's got a decent size well there, so it's never going to run dry. Um, the, the loop system won't be a drama to you know to be able to loop both um, both rails. So that was the main thing I really wanted to show you there. Just one other thing why I've got you, I've, as I've probably shown you um, in a previous video, again I keep referring to all the time because it's the only thing I can say uh, to think to describe things, but. I've put in some set screws here because I had to modify the actual linear blocks, which I've already talked about to suit the um, Mazak setup. Uh, it's come from, um, I think it's 62, which is uh, the high wind setup, to um, the, um, the Mazak version, which is 72, so that, that hole's drilled 10 mil further back. There's no drama with actually any load on it anyway. Any load would be taking up in the actual um, the ball screw itself or it's in, in direction of the actual linears anyway. So it's actually not, it's not tearing on the holes, but I just put those in there just to make it more of a finished job. So they're uh, just high tensile set screws and I've just locked tied those in there. Uh, a fairly permanent type of Loctite in there. So they're probably never, never be coming back out again. 
Uh, not that anyone will be probably ever looking in here anyway, but it's just more a peace of mind for myself that I've done the job right. As I say, it won't actually tear across because there's no no actual load on the actual linears. This direction is probably more side load when you're machining in towards the chuck, so loading back onto the blocks and then transferring back into the rails themselves. But it's just it's just more so just to finish off that job. So that um, that loop block. Um, you just pulled it up with bolts through, so you just poke the bolts through and just pull it up. So I've bored them, I sort of counterboard those a little bit so that actually it acts like a bit of a dowel, so the bolt actually goes into the actual into that actual hole about four or five mil, I think it is, before it actually before the thread actually starts, so that actually it's easier to get the bolt started rather than trying to start the thread on the surface. Just maybe a little tip if you're ever doing something like that because you you're doing this blind because you can imagine the turrets sitting right on top of here and you're putting the bolts through. So I've already done a trial fit on it to make sure everything fits up properly and then uh, taking the turret back off again and then, uh, well, turret housing and put it back on the bench and just get it, all the bits bolted back in. And now it's just a case of putting it back on here and uh, doing the last fitting off. And then that's pretty much the most of the internal mechanicals, I suppose, of the machine. Then there's just a lot of sheet metal covers and things like that just to work on now. Uh, the bulk of them, the mechanic, as I say, the mechanicals are done now. It's just, as I say, the sheet metal cover to go the full length of the machine that I can start running all the services then. And a lot of sheet metal work to still finish off that I've still got to do, and I'll bring you back with some of those things along the way. Otherwise, that'll probably do for this video. And thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Okay, bye for now.